let me leave you with Mr. Escarrer, uh, Executive Vice President and CEO of Melia. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. So a very good morning to you all. And thank you so much for your presence. I know we all have very busy agendas in Fitur. And so thank you for taking the time to listen to us and to understand a little more what the company has done in 2022, the challenges of 2023, the expansion, and we will finally have an outlook of how we see the first quarter of the year, which is practically as far as we can envisage. 2023 is what we call the clear year of recovery, 2022. We started from a first very complicated quarter because of the uh, coronavirus, Omicron. It was the first quarter that was worse in the history of the company. Second quarter, very similar to the second quarter of 2019 and the third quarter, which was record-breaking in the company. The fourth quarter went quite well. And we will present the results that we can present as a listed company, which is the first nine months of the year. When we were here last year in Fitur in January, I said that the company would have more than 400 million in EBITDA and we it would make money by the end of the year. Some uh, in the pandemic, having seen how the market was looking, qualified this as very bold and daring, but time proved us right in the first nine months. We ended up with uh, an EBITDA uh, without capital gain of uh, 328, and we'll end up the year with over 500 million and a net profit of 52.6. You see that the average rate has improved very much. And this is where we still have uh, room uh, to grow also in occupancy. Also, we considered the strategy of the company with the brands, digitalization, innovation, the Fidelity uh, program. And last year, in 2022, we signed over uh, 8,200 rooms and the EBITDA will be exceeding 400 million. So the company is, we believe, uh, coming out very strong. The pending challenges of the sector in the company and the tourist sector to continue improving our operating margins. Clearly, the inflation we've had in the past year is something that no one expected, and we need to continue improving our margins. We still have the need to attract and retain the best possible talent, and we've realized it's a problem in the whole tourist sector how we anticipated in 2022, we hired most of our talent in March of April. We hired over 3,200 people to cover the vacant jobs we had in Spain and moving on with the sustainability in all our business. And this year, we have achieved a high level of sustainability with net zero emissions as the Gran Melea Villa Leblanc in Menorca has achieved. We are convinced that the company will lead the post-COVID tourism and there are new trends in the consumption habits in which the client is more and more digital, the client is considering more and more leisure above other things and that's where we see how we are capitalizing on those new tendencies uh, with people who are looking for more premium experiences. Our growth in deluxe rooms has been of plus 36% uh, compared to the previous year. The current portfolio of the hotels we have is 60 that are premium and the most important thing is that 80 percent of the pipeline are 54 hotels which is 80 percent uh within the category of premium so 
there's been huge advances in the past three years where the portfolio of luxury hotels has increased in over 40%. Here we have a clear example with uh, this example in Dubai. Innovation. We've done things that I feel very proud of, like the launch of the Zen brand with Rafa Nadal. And what we try to do is to reflect the essence of the Mediterranean. This is the uh, room of the first Zen in Mallorca. I'll tell you what. It's not the definitive uh, room in, in it. The, it does represent the essence of the Mediterranean. We think uh, these are brands that will have great growth and the goals we set ourselves in the launch uh, a month ago. Uh, the idea is to achieve 20 hotels under the Zell brand, and we are convinced that we will achieve this. These are the noble areas, how the Zell will look, and this is the first inside hotel, the Cala Blanca and Palmanova Hotel. Some said in Magaluf, but it's not Magaluf. It's in this other area. And then there will be another one in Mexico, and by next year, Madrid, Marbella, the Canary Islands, Southeast Asia will have more Zell hotels. And this is not something virtual. This is a real example of the rooms of this hotel. With our ho uh, partners in Falcons, we've also launched a new concept, which is a leisure experience, family experience, the Falcons Resorts, together with a theme park. This is a first example. It's an evolution of the Kathmandu example in uh, Magaluf with Kathmandu Park. In innovation, we also feel very proud with the launch of Melia.com, which is the fifth generation of Melia.com. But the most surprising is that the design is mobile first as a part of our uh, bookings. Two thirds are done through the mobile phone. And this has been designed uh, following the demands of a four inch screen, which would be the screen size of any smartphone. And then we have adapted it to the computer and the tablets. But this is the first time we do a mobile first design and we are very happy because it is growing at two digit. Currently, we have 14.7 million clients in our Emilia Rewards program, which is 16% more than 2019. And the average of Emilia.com compared to any centralized uh, selling exceeds 43%. So perhaps it's one of the best practices in the hotel sector worldwide. Besides this um, Melia.com and the app, we've also launched, together with Logi Travel El Corte Inglés, we've launched uh, Melia Escapes, which is uh, buying um, packages uh, for hotel stays and flights and different uh, experiences in the hotels. We see that many times people would book a room and they would uh, ask for the whole vacation package. And with that, we launched Melia Escapes and we are very pleased with uh, the launch and with the evolution ex experiencing. As I said before, sustainability, it used to be very important. Now it is indispensable. It is key. The post-pandemic um, customer is very aware of sustainability. And as you'll know, this summer, we opened up the first net zero hotel, Vivia Le Blanc. With the inauguration, we've decreased the emissions in the hotel in 87%. And besides having the 
uh, A energy certification. We have uh, solar energy, uh, thermal insulation of the facades. It's an example of circle economy. All the suppliers are from the island, the builders, the materials have been from the Balearic Islands, and we have opened up restaurants that were implemented. And I think it's an example of sustainability and of circle economy. The company is also undertaking ambitious goals in the carbon footprint emissions. For 2025, in two years' time, we have set ourselves to cut down 29% minimum of our carbon footprint by 2035. In 12 years, we want to decrease our carbon footprint compared to 2018 of minus 71% minimum. And that's what we are working on with several sustainability indicators, with the circularity a plan for the, all our hotels worldwide. Another challenge that we have is uh, a people. We want to have a new value proposition for our employees. Talent is scarce. You have to fight for talent. We believe the best talent should think of uh, Melia as a first option, and we should be able to capture and retain a talent and uh, let them have their own professional development. And we're working very much on approaching universities and business schools and uh, working on being top employer for four years. We've been top employer in the Dominican Republic, Mexico, and Spain. And we've been leading uh, in Medical Talent for several years. Yesterday, we launched our VIP program, Very Inspiring People, and we believe it will be an added value. And that is the people that make up the great family in Meliam. All these challenges that I've mentioned before and that we think this company has done the homework for has allowed us to grow very much and has allowed us to see Melia as a safe port for uh, small size hotel chains and independent hotels, digitalization, innovation of products like the Zelle and the Falcon brands and the new app and the new website. The uh, meals, the drinks, uh, brand diversity. I think we are covering all market segments. Our loyalty program, 15 million active members and our possibilities have allowed us to experience growth and with new hotels opened up. This is a new one we have in Vietnam. It's fantastic. This is what we will open up in uh, Tanzania, in Gorongoro, and uh, the Vin Pearl Hotel in Vietnam. So in the end, this year, we will have opened up 32 hotels. Pre-COVID, we were always at 25, 26 hotels. So I believe there's been an exponential growth We've opened up over 7,500 rooms in 2022, but in the future, last year we signed 33 hotels, 8,200 rooms that we will have in the next two years. We also see that the most recent brands in pandemic have been brands with extraordinary progression in the market. I want to mention two of them the Melia collection, in which since the launch, we've incorporated nine hotels. We're speaking of scarcely two years ago. And affiliated by Melia, where we've incorporated 79 hotels. This is an example of the Melia London Kensington. In Kensington, London, which is an example of the Melia collection. And here we have in Albania, an affiliated by Melia. Vietnam is a country that we feel very comfortable in. We are the second hotel company in the country. The first one, Acor, is very implemented in the urban world. And 
outside of the cities. We are the first reference. We have 27 hotels there, 7,800 rooms open with the expansion pipeline. We might reach 35, 36 hotels in the next two years. The last incorporation, which we announced last week on Friday, is a great example on our bet for urban resorts. This is a great example of an urban hotel that could be considered as a vacation hotel because of the expansion, the gardens, the pools, the spa, the Congress Center. We believe it's a hotel that includes many, many qualities and I am convinced it will be a turning point in our presence in Barcelona. We have nine centers in um, nine hotels in Barcelona. This one, me in Casp, Barcelona Saria and Barcelona Sky, and three insights: uh, Apollo, uh, Barcelona Airport, and Condal. So we are fully displayed with all our brands in Barcelona, which was one of the things we had pending on our to-do list. We are very happy here because our disembarkment in the Seychelles, we will be with this, we will be present in 43 countries and this will be inaugurated in 2025, which I believe will be a hotel that will be a trendsetter in luxury hotels in the country. Inaugurations of 2022, focusing strongly on Southeast Asia. Of these 15 hotels, 14 are in Vietnam, one is in Thailand, five hotels in Spain. To us, it is key to be leaders in Spain, and we've opened up those five hotels, nine in the rest of Europe, which are the ones you see, and two in America, in Brazil. Here we have an example of one of the last inaugurations under the Melia Collection brand. It's a palace 15 minutes away from Florence, very much reflecting the uniqueness of the Melia Collection uh, hotels, the boutique hotels, very personalized with culture, gastronomy, and all the essence. The inaugurations of 2022 of the 15 hotels we opened up in the Southeast Asia. This is the one we opened up in Chiang Mai in Thailand, one of the tourist capitals in Thailand after Bangkok. This is in Greece, Sol Marina Beach, Greece. The Mediterranean Basin is very important for us, Croatia. We are the first uh, hotel company in Croatia, and we want to continue expanding in the country. Villa Le Blanc, an example of a renewal of the hotel, the first uh, five-star Grand Luxus, and the first related to the living hotels of the leading hotels of the world, with net zero and. Uh, example of sustainability and circle economy. This is another example of a refurbished hotel, Melia Zara Alanterra, representing the essence of the Mediterranean. Paradis is Palma Real in the Dominican Republic was one of the flag hotels and we used the time of the pandemic to renew it completely. And I have to say that to me, it's the best hotel in the Dominican Republic, in my opinion. Other examples of hotels refurbished, Belia Valencia. I just want you to see that in these two years, and especially since there was low uh, occupation by clients because of the pandemic, we undertook important investment to improve our portfolio. This will be inaugurated in March. The presence of the Paradises brand in Gran Canaria. This is a brand implemented in the Caribbean and for the first time this year, we will take it to the Canary Islands and we will start with this hotel in the Canary Islands and then the Salinas Hotel in Lanzarote. One will open up in March and the other one 
beginning of April, most likely this year, and we are sure that it will be a success in a clear example of the Paradises brand in Europe. And finally, many of you asked for prospects and the vision for this year. Everyone was envisaging an important recession. We don't see any symptoms of slowdown, neither in consumption or rates or traveling frequency. The first quarter is looking good. Visibility is less than in other years because the clients use more and more digital channels. So the visibility is seen two, three years later when these figures, uh, by this time, we had a visibility, including the summer. But to date, to show you that the demand for traveling for the time being is perhaps sort of immunized given the economic recession. This is what we have in our own channels compared to 2022 and 2019. So compared to 2022, there's a 30% growth in Spain, 23% compared to 2019. And globally, with a strong presence in Southeast Asia, we have 35% more bookings by now than in 2022 and 40% more than in 2019. The important thing is that the average rate to date is 7% greater than in 2022 and definitely more than 30% uh, compared to 2019. So I would say that I would be um, carefully optimistic. These numbers look good, but it's true. They are focusing on the first three, four months, which is when we have more visibility. And in that optimism, careful optimism, uh, we see a recovery of uh, tour operators. Uh, we'll see a recovery of 95% of air traffic compared to 2019, which is great news because all um, intermediaries are recovering with an, again, comeback of anticipation of bookings and with a better uh, behavior of the uh, UK market compared to the German market. Perhaps Germany is suffering more the consequences of the energy crisis, although it's still growing. But the recovery rates we see are looking better in the British market than the German market. And especially we see a demand, a greater demand of all-inclusive by um, the families. We also see a consistent recovery of the urban segment and uh, the mice sector. Last year, there was a uh, strong deployment of uh, Congresses, and now we have figures that are very similar or even above those of 2019. So full recovery in 2023, currently, Congresses, conventions, incentives will have plus 30% compared to the same period in 2018 vis-a-vis -vis 2019. Mexico and the Dominican Republic are leaders in this growth. The North American market has a strong demand and they are demanding more and more of these events and Congresses. Homework has uh, damaged many companies, many workers have lost their identity and the sense of belonging to the company. That's why there are there's so much turnover in the employees. So that's why companies want to celebrate these events to create a sense of belonging for the workers. And for Spain and Europe, we see very good year in cities like Palma, Madrid, Seville, Valencia, and in Germany. Frankfurt, Berlin, also Milan and Amsterdam will have a very good year in this segment, which is where there is more visibility together with our own channel sales, which is at three months time. So for 2023, we have at least 
25 new inaugurations. There will be more, I'm sure, in 14 countries. Here you see again the importance of continuing in Europe on the Mediterranean basin, Spain, Italy, Malta, Albania. In Albania, we're the first hotel company in Asia. We're still growing in Thailand, Vietnam, and Malaysia, in America, Mexico, Cuba, and Brazil, and then moving on to Africa, in Tanzania, Qatar, Saudi Arabia. And these are some examples of the inaugurations. This is a hotel we will open up in Milan, which will be uh, Madrid together with Barcelona and Palma. We have uh, this Melia, Ami, Melia, and two insight. This is the former headquarters of Generali, where we have built a boutique hotel of 86 rooms, five cell grand luxury. And this is the cathedral in Milan. So I have to say that uh, the location in Milan is excellent. This is an example of another inauguration, this uh, hotel in Vietnam, which will be one of the leading hotels of the world in the seafront with spectacular touches. Another example of inauguration, Mi Malta, which will be our second hotel designed exclusively by South David. The first one is the Mi Dubai which is a hotel that will be a reference, I'm sure, in La Valeta, in the capital. Me, Guadalajara, which would be our presence with a Me brand in Guadalajara. It'll be a trendsetter and a reference in the city, no doubt. In the month of May, June, we will also open up a hotel in the Gorongoro Crater. I don't know if you've been. It's the crater where all the animals migrate from Tanzania to Kenya. And it is wonderful. And it really complements our hotel because we have in Tanzania the Malia Serengeti, which is two hours from here. Perusa, Zanzibar. So we are having a strong name in Tanzania, we might be number one hotel company in the company. Melia Trinidad Peninsula in Cuba, the last hotel that will open up for the fair trade, the tourist uh, trade in Cuba, which will be a turning point in the premium offer in the country. And then we have Melia Duris in Alba Albania, already inaugurated. It will be the best vacation hotel in the country. Very nicely designed on a paradise island, on a paradise beach, sorry. Another example is inside Santa Cruz in Tenerife. This used to be the former headquarter of the Corte Inglés shopping center. We've turned it into an inside hotel in a wonderful location with a terrace, with a pool and a bar. I'm sure it will be a reference place in the city. Another example is inside Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, our third hotel there, complementing the other hotels. And that is all I wanted to say, as you've seen very intense years with intense work but I'm sure that the company has learned how to capitalize the challenges in the tourist sector and has come out stronger. With a strong focus on direct distribution, brands, innovation, launching new products. Our staff who has been key, sustainability. This growth that we've shown you would have not been possible without it. And this is what you should expect in the future an average of 30 signatures per year and 30, 35 inaugurations per year, which is how we feel comfortable. Thank you so much for your presence, and I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Hello? 
Eh, Gabriel, ¿nos puedes explicar más el proyecto? Can you tell us a little about the uh, Zell project in Palmanova Reds category? Since uh, we were from Mallorca, Rafa Nadal and myself, we wanted to start in Mallorca. It's a beachfront hotel in the Palmanova area. We intend to have it open all year round. It's a four star superior and it very much reflects the standards that we set in the Zell brand. Mediterranean essence, 180 rooms, a size that we feel very comfortable in. Uh, with a bar on the beach, which will be very successful with uh, very much focusing on food and beverage, Mediterranean diet, with good facilities for sports, with a gym that will be one of the best in the company, uh, especially for 180 rooms. And it will have a spa with massage booths. So many of the concepts we spoke of are reflected in the hotel. We, we wanted to be a reference when we inaugurated, and it has allowed us to uh, attract several investors who want it. So it's one of the brands that I expect more growth in because of the demand of these, the market niche, which I don't think many other companies are um, covering it. Any other questions? I think the next one would be in Mexico, right? Can you tell us where it would be? And we would also like to know what is the agreement with Rafa Nadal? Can you give us a clue? Yeah, the agreement is sharing the brands. All the Melia brands are 100% our, except for Zell, which is 50% uh, property. So we have royalties for the use of the brand where every part charges and we manage the brand 100%. So it's a brand that is managed like the other brands. And there are commitments on behalf of the uh, Nadal family and the Escarrer family to incorporate it pre-existing and uh, third party um, locations to incorporate more hotels in the next four years and we feel very comfortable in those goals mexico i can't tell you where exactly i'm sorry mexico is something we know very well we're there since 1938 and we are sure that a product like this will be very much liked it's a pleasure to see you. Could you explain, please? What's the secret? How do you work so well? I am an admirer of your father and yourself. What's the secret for being so successful and so hardworking? Thank you for your compliments. To me, it's to have a very clear strategy and uh, to be surrounded by a wonderful team. Even in the bad years in the pandemic, there was, uh, we reconsidered everything. We can question many things, but there are three fundamental things that we cannot question. One is the name of the company, then the company values, and the 2030 vision, where we want to take the company in the next years. There's a strong bet on the vacation world, and as you've seen, Southeast Asia, Mediterranean Basin, Caribbean, and Africa as well. That's where we believe we can add very much value and where we have a competitive edge. Having a clear strategy that bet on innovation, on brands, digitalization, sustainability, and people has been key, and it has allowed us to come out strong in this crisis. But having a very clear strategy and being surrounded by a strong team, I think we have the best uh, team in the sector, has made us um, take a quantum leap in these difficult moments for the sector. We've come out very strongly, and thank you for your kind words. Hi, I wanted to ask about the new hotel that you will be managing in Barcelona. Can you tell us when it will be inaugurated? It's a hotel 
that has a huge debt. The creditors are negotiating that. I don't know if you're worried about this or have you been insured the viability of the hotel. I have no doubt about the viability of the hotel. The hotel has been purchased by a fund that has been working for more than 15 years with us, Tyrus. There are serious people. I have no doubts about the viability of the hotel. We will undertake a huge refurbishment to take it to the current standards and turn it into a reference in Barcelona. And there will be a progressive opening. First, we will open up the convention center where we're, uh, we are incentivizing uh, the selling. We will open up in May, June, uh, July in this year, and then the hotel. The hotel was closed down in March of 2020 in the pandemic, and we were in the due diligence, proce due diligence process to see how much of the infrastructure we could use. We believe we could use very much. Our intention is to open up as soon as possible. And the Congress Center, uh, May, June, will open up. Last year, there was huge investment that the hotels had with uh, Victoria Group. Will there be any disinvestment in that sense this year? And some hotels in the Calero Group were no longer commercialized by the company in December, uh, extended the um, commercialization until mid-year. How's it going? Because uh, Madrid would lose the me, and I'd like to know. The selling of Victoria Hotels was not in 22, it was in 21. And we don't see in Spain any changes. We're very happy because thanks to uh, that joint venture we did with uh, Bank Inter and the group, we were able to work more quickly in hotels in Menorca like some of the hotels we saw, like Zara and Los Atunes. We've accelerated uh, the renovation in the equity. We always said we wanted to keep a management contract. We are working with a fund, working on the due diligence for the acquisition and uh, taking care of the management, the full management, which is possibly what will happen. So we will not lose, I assure you, the Mi Hotel. You briefly were mentioning of the, the reservations, the bookings of this first quarter. Could you give us a perspective for the whole year, how much you think um, the sales will be? And if last year the sales were above 2019, and what do you think will be the peak, the average peak growth of the year? I see that the rates will have room for growth, but we will insist more on occupancy. Compared to 2022, there's an average increase of the rate of 7% with less visibility because the consumer has become accustomed to the digital channels. So it's a visibility of three, four months. For Easter vacation, the perspectives are looking good. I can't go any further because I don't think it would be realistic. Another segment with more visibility, which is uh, mice, uh, sector, we are at figures greater than in 2019, about 30%. To date, this day in 2019, and today we compare, we are 30% greater than in 2019. So I'm very hopeful for the summer. I'm also hopeful, but I don't have the visibility that uh, I have beyond the three next months. 
You said you don't expect any more sales in Spain. I, I don't know if you expect some outside of Spain. What we announced of about 200 million of assets that are not in Spain, keeping stake uh, and with the 25-year management agreement. But besides that, we don't foresee any other rotation of assets. And that operation is already in the final phase. Should be. Yes. I don't see any problem on behalf of the buyers or on our side. It's more uh, bureaucracy that we still have to wait for. And then I wanted to ask you if you would be open to buy. It is expected that there could be changes in the sector. Or what would you like to do besides uh, the growth through management? And the fund that you mentioned for the ME operations is Savia. About the growth, we will focus very much on organic growth, and we think that adding 30, 35 hotels per year is what we can take in without creating bottlenecks. Very much uh, expansion is taking place in countries where we are strongly present, Vietnam, Thailand, Cuba, Spain, Albania, countries where we are strongly implanted. So the incorporation of new hotels, I don't think is easy, but it's much more doable than in a new country. That is where we will uh, have a priority. In terms of procurement, our priority is to strengthen our balance sheet so we cannot foresee a requirement where we have majority stake. Perhaps we could do it with an investment fund with a minority uh, stake, and there is nothing in the radar. But if there's an opportunity coming out that fits with our vision, it would be with uh, capital a contribution where we would participate as a family, but not with our own equity, because we know that the priority is to do, as I said. Thank you very much. We have to finish this uh, uh, part. Thank you so much. I think you have a very busy agenda, so I'll see you next year. Thank you very much. Thank you.